there must be something in the water these days because I've been getting a lot of emails from people asking me about various exercises and my thoughts on them. And our first exercise is a fingertip push-ups or anything having to do with your fingers on the floor as you're doing either planks, push-ups, and so on. Now, of course, I was first introduced to this exercise in Convict Conditioning 2, and it's kind of billed as an extensor exercise to complement grip-style training that work primarily your forearm flexors or your finger flexors. But I guess I've never quite understood how this is supposed to work, because whenever I put my fingers on the floor, I feel like I'm still grasping the floor or clawing into the floor, which is still a kind of a flexion exercise. And even if I'm putting attention to trying to kind of spread the floor apart, it still feels a little bit like it's a grasping type technique. So it's not really one of my favorites, although by all means use whatever you feel is appropriate for you. Instead, working my extensors, I'm much more of a fan of one of my overcoming isometrics where I just simply open my hands as wide as I can and I pull my fingers back, usually having my arms down by the side. Really gets the extensors, feels like a nice stretch on the bottom of the forearm, and it's certainly one of the more effective ways I feel to hit those extensors. Another exercise I like for the extensors is the reverse isometric biceps curl with either iso chain or any sort of isometric device like an iso trainer where I'm just trying to pull upwards but I'm also slightly extending my wrists just a little bit so I'm getting much more of that activation in the top of my forearm versus trying to just pull up like so I'm getting some of that isometric wrist extension. The other exercise are techniques for working the shin muscles or the anterior tibialis. Now there's certain devices out there that can work your dorsiflexion. And this type of training is very practical for a lot of physical therapy applications or to kind of balance out the tension and the strength in the lower leg, especially for athletic training purposes. But the most effective way to work your shin muscles is to use them with every lower body exercise you do. Things like squats, lunges, and other compound movements, especially ground-based stuff, where you bring your knees forward in order to maintain your stability and your balance. This is why I've always advocated that when we're doing compound lower body exercises, we wanna think about bringing our hip as close to the heel as possible and flex with the hip flexor, the hamstring, and yes, dorsiflexion using your shins, and that's going to equalize the power and the force throughout your joints, but also make your muscles work a lot more effectively. And when it comes to training the tension control in those shin muscles, duck walks are a really good way to go about it. I usually pair these up with calf raises for people I train like runners and so on, or just simple toe touches are a good way to go about it as well. Now you'll notice those shin muscle exercises are similar to the wrist extensor techniques where they're gonna work the muscle, they're gonna get a good burn, but they're not really all about the strength and hardcore training of the muscle, and largely because it doesn't have to be. Very few times are you going to really make a lot of progress in your overall strength or even the development of your physique by trying to train your extensors or your shin muscles. If you got them to be much, much stronger, it's not gonna really make much difference as it is. So they're not really something we have to focus on unless we've got some sort of an imbalance that's bringing about uh, aches, pains, or the risk of injury, in which case that stuff is usually pretty self-evident. And then our third exercise is the squatted calf raise. So instead of doing standard, typical standing calf raises, we're on some sort of a ledge. We're squatting down, we have some support with our upper body, and we basically do calf raises somewhat in a squatted position. My understanding of this exercise is that it closely resembles the classic seated calf raise, which used to be a favorite of mine back in the day. And the whole idea, as I knew, was that the bending knee calf raise variations are more about focusing more emphasis in the soleus muscle, which is a deeper muscle in the calf, which can contribute to a lot of calf size, as opposed to the more superficial gastronemius. However, calf raises of the standing variety still work that soleus pretty darn well, as well as the gastronemius. So my question is, 
why would you want a calf exercise that puts more emphasis in one muscle while taking it away from the other when you could do a standing variation and just get both work to a very high degree? I've also heard that the seated calf raise is really good for working the Achilles tendon, which once again, it's like, well, yeah, all leg exercises do that. Anything that involves your calves or stability in your lower body is going to put stress through your Achilles tendon. I'm not a big believer in this idea of needing to strengthen tendons to begin with. Most of the time, your tendons are far stronger and more resilient than your muscles ever are. So whenever we have tendon issues, it's almost never because the tendon is weak, it's because their associated muscles have trouble holding on to tension in an elongated position. And once again, if that's what we're driving at, standing calf raises are still gonna win out. At the end of the day, all three of these exercises are perfectly fine to practice, but when I look at their cost to benefit ratio, I find that unless you have a specific need for these techniques, you're probably better off just incorporating the use of those muscles with more classic compound exercises. And even still, if you're like focusing on the extensors, the calves and the shins, there may be better ways to go about it that directly target it in a more holistic fashion. But what do I know? I could be completely off my rocker. Let me know your comments and thoughts down below if I've missed anything, got anything completely wrong, or if you've got further tips on how you can enhance these exercises for the RDP community. Thank you very much for watching. Be fit and live free.